Yesterday, someone asked me why I'm talking about separation and divorce. And I thought, why not? Maybe if we talked about it a lot more, it wouldn't be so scary and we would stop living life from a constant place of fear, fear of change. The end of a marriage is the beginning of a new phase in one's life. And the choice of whether it's a good or bad phase is up to you. Because the only constant in life is change. But how we navigate through this change is the most important part. Hence today's title, the beginning, or sorry, I meant the end, the beginning and the middle. So with this, let's delve right in. But first, let me introduce my guest. We've just had a really fun time behind the <laughs> scenes before we went live. Um, her name is Ebon Fawale, guidance counselor and family life practitioner. Ebon is the founder of the Push Through Consults, the Balanced Teen and Balanced Woman Initiatives. Ebon is a professional guidance counselor and a family life therapist who uses NLP, psychotrauma healing, and family system engineering for therapy and repatterning. Ebon served as a volunteer on the counseling team of Top Niger, helping people through their emotional and mental imbalance during the COVID-19 pandemic. She's a volunteer counselor on the Journey to Wholeness counseling team of L-Cube International. And she served as the head of operations at the Center for Sex Education and Family Life. Welcome, Ebo. Thank you very it's much. It's really cool man. to have you here. <laughs> right. And I loved that dance we just did mm. behind the scenes. We have to be yeah. intentional about life. We do, don't we? I love right. your red glasses. Thank you. So, separation <laughs> slash divorce. Mm -hmm. I put the slash because, for obvious reasons, some people don't get divorced, but they stay separated for a while. Yeah. So, tell me, why do people, why are people scared of ending relationships that aren't working? Mm, so many things. Mm. Um, the fear of stigma. Mm. The fear of um, where will I start from? Mm. For example, for the woman, you, you just live your life for your spouse. And so you think about what will happen to me? You know, apart from what will people say, mm. how will I go ahead? What will I do? What will I say? How will I explain it? Mm. A lot of fear, fear of, un of the unknown, then talk about the religious aspect. Mm. That's another one. Yeah. Divorce, God hates divorce. Supposedly. Supposedly, you know? <laughs> so if we're gonna say God hates divorce, well, God does not hate the divorcee. He just hates the act of divorce. Okay. The people involved, you know, so a lot so of still reasons. Supposedly. Yeah. Still supposedly. So um, some people say because of their children. Mm. And I think we are now in the era where the children are also asking now, that, Mommy, why didn't you leave? Mommy, you damaged me, you know, that kind of a thing. So people are well, confronting. But, but you, you, you said, Mommy, Mommy. What about Daddy? Yeah, true. Daddy's too. I think it is more of the ego saying that I failed as a man. I'm not able to keep a home. Mm. That's why it is. But it is more on the part of the woman mm. to, to be afraid to leave. The man is all, you know, I'm not saying that the man does not suffer what the woman suffer. I had spoken with quite a number of men and I discovered that, in fact, the fear is more on them, really. Uh -huh. Yeah. Fear of what would the society say? Then the fear of failure. Men want to be in charge. They don't want to be tagged with failure. Mm. And so they are afraid to say they failed. Okay. So, yeah. so essentially, fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear mm. of failure. Fear of, you know, fear of change. Mm. Fear, fear, fear. Mm. So knowing that there is this fear, are there <sighs> things that we should be mindful of before ending a relationship are there tools that are needed before ending a relationship so when we say tools mm. i i will ask that are you saying abc tools or what because so when we are saying tools if you're going to talk about tools then you must use the tool before you enter the marriage oh, can you explain that so we have the premarital counseling okay. that's why you talk about everything mm your beliefs, your values, and all those things, you know. Mm. By the time you get into marriage and mm. you see that, okay, things are not the way I see it, mm. I think the major tool is just to see a professional counsellor okay. to help okay, you so, through. So, okay, so let me interrupt you. So you haven't done any of those things. You've decided that the marriage is over and you've ended the marriage. 
for sure you're ending the marriage mm. or you've ended it in your how mind do you, because you, i know exactly that, people that you, you have ended, ended it already mind, yeah. exactly so how do you then navigate from the end to the beginning what's beginning beginning of the beginning another of life. life that's a lot you see going into marriage like i said if you didn't go through the premarital counseling properly there are some things you bring in. We all brought in baggages from our homes. Mm -hmm. You're coming from a different nation. I call family a nation. Okay. I'm coming from a different nation. Okay. And so the, the custom and the tradition, the way we do things, where I'm coming from, I brought it in. Mm -hmm. So we have lived together mm -hmm. and we see that it's not working. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are the things I am complaining about? And what exactly are the things you are complaining about? Mm. What are those things that is not making it work? Mm. When you think about all those things, you know that you have to correct them okay. before you start that new life. And so you're ending a marriage. You, are, you came in with a hurt. You're, mm. you're hurt again. Mm. So you have added baggage to the baggage you came in with. Mm. To be sincere with yourself, you need to sit down and do like a self-audit. Mm. That um, if truly I am going to marry somebody or I want to start living, can I date me? That's a very good question. Can, can I, I really date, date me? me? Because I have to, you know I said I have to be sincere with myself. Mm -hmm. Can I really date me? What are the things that I'm doing that I know that, you know, these customs and traditions, those belief systems that I brought in mm. to marry that were not really empowering, mm. that sabotaged my relationship with my spouse? Mm. When you think about all those things, you ask that question. So, forget about the other person. Yes. Me. And that's where self-awareness comes in. Mm. Are you aware of who you are? You know, these are very deep questions mm. that a lot of people don't actually ask themselves. But how do you even get to that point where you're able to do this self-assessment and self-audit? Hmm. When you, so I said take away the other person mm -hmm. from the picture mm -hmm. and sit yourself down. But you see a lot of us live in autopilot. And so we just continue like that. We just justify what we have done. We just try to condemn the other person. And that's why I said we need to be sincere with ourselves because mm. it takes two mm -hmm. to actually tango. Mm. What are the, what are the, you've sat yourself down, mm. you've done, or you've started the process of a self-assessment. Mm. What are the strategies that one must employ to have a fulfilling beginning and an impactful middle after the end? To have impactful middle, mm -hmm. you need to start working on yourself. That's where the personal development comes in. You, like I said, you, you are hot. You either allow the divorce or the separation change you or help you continue the way you have been. Okay, change you for the positive or the negative? For the positive or the negative. Okay. So, see, when you're doing something that is not so correct, you will know. Mm. You, you want to maintain your stand, but at the same time, you listen to what people are saying and try to also assess yourself. Could that be too much noise? in your ears, in your brain, if you're listening to what people are saying? So when I say what people are saying, I'm not talking about listening. I said, you want to maintain. So you know there are two ways to this thing. The person that is hurting somebody and the person that is being hurt. Okay, yes. And both of us believe that I'm right, I'm correct. Whatever it is I'm doing, I am correct. But there is that checking voice that is always there. Mm. And that's why I said, sit with yourself, assess yourself. By the time you're asking yourself, can I live with me? Can I date me? Mm. This reality starts unfolding. Mm. Relationship, you know, we have, our realities are different. Mm. 
Mm. Right? So your, your own experience might be different from my own experience. Our realities are different and we need to pay attention to those things that were not going right. Mm. You are complaining. I am complaining. I should take time to think about what you're saying. I'm not just hold on to what my mind is telling me. I see what you mean. Do you understand? Yeah. Because most of the time we are just selfish. And we are not considering the other person. Very true, very true. Can you, can you, can one... You know, there's this statistics that says... You had told me about statistics yesterday. First yeah. time marriages... 35% 35% of first marriages end mm -hmm. and 65% um, of the second marriages end in divorce again. That means So 65% yeah, of the second try yeah. ends in divorce. Yeah. Is it really possible to change those statistics? So that's where the healing comes in. Because and that's why I'm saying sit yourself down, ask questions. So for those that are, you know, you're just in a hurry to go into another relationship. You have not really sat down to think about what happened in the past relationship. What are the people that are so scared that they say, I'm never going into another relationship? So, healing. Mm. This thing we call marriage and this thing we call divorce. It is, like I said, you're coming in with a lot of baggages. So, when you have that understanding, that, okay, there's something I'm doing, believes um, significant emotional experiences, your environment, your upbringing, mm. This were the things that contributed to who you are today. Mm. If you look at your parents' marriage, you want to have that kind of marriage. Mm. If you had entered your marriage with that kind of life, and because, so let me tell you something, um, Ferron. Most of the time, we just believe what our parents are not doing, what our parents are doing is not correct. And unconsciously, we are imbibing all those things and we are storing them in the subconscious to the point that by the time you get married, you just discover how many of you, did you ever say it's fair and be truthful mm. when you were growing up? I don't want to be like my mom. <laughs> we all say it. I don't want we to be like my mom. I, I, do, I said it. Yeah. My mom was this disciplinarian and all and I was just said, no, I don't want to be like my mom. By the time I got married, had my first child, I saw myself projecting and doing the same thing. Yes. My 100%. mother did. 100%. And it took my daughter to say, Mommy, why are you like this? Hmm. That, was, that, was, that was the that moment was. I know, okay, the same thing my mom did to me. So we, we, we bring into our marriages mm -hmm. the kind of thing we saw our parents do. But you know, what if, what if when you... So to this thing of, I don't want to be like my mom, the older I got, the more I realized that my mom is an awesome human being and I would be lucky to have half of the character traits that she has. So how do we then balance the, uh, you know? I, I'm, I'm glad you said that by the time you're growing older. So when we are saying we don't want something, we didn't really sit down to understand why, why? they were doing it. Yes. To understand their perspective. To understand their perspective. Very true. Very true. And so we just say we don't, we don't want it. We didn't really sit down. We are just being the child. That we, mm. you know. Mm. And so if we are taking time to think about it then, we would have learned the lessons and we would have been able to handle it maybe better because mm. they did what they did with the level of information they had. They had. Yeah. And by the time you had seen this, by the time you see those things in your parents, you try to find a way around it to say, okay, they did it this way. If I should do it this way, maybe it will be better. But we will still arrive at the same results because they are trying to teach you. You know, our parents were trying to tell us that, see, don't do it this way. Though the method they are using is not we don't like the it's a method we don't actually like mm. not what they are telling us mm. and so we are growing kind of resistance to the method mm. okay so 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 here's the thing we've we've talked about the pre yeah can one really have a fulfilling life after separation or divorce i believe that you can you're the expert. Can one really... Oh, yes, you can. 
Divorce is not the end of life. Mm. You fail at something does not mean you are a failure. Mm. And that's one thing I want people to understand. That your marriage ended does not mean your life should stop. Mm -hmm. This thing, divorce, the way people talk about it, they make, it seem, see, they make us see it as if it's the end of the world. And that's why people are afraid. Mm. I have been separated and divorced for, it's going to be 11 years on the 21st. Mm. I've been out of my marriage. And I would say that I'm better off for it. Yes. Because by the time I was walking out, I told myself, I, I didn't have any mentor around. Mm. That's just the truth. I, I didn't have any marriage or any example of a widow or of a divorcee that I want to follow. Mm. We always see bitter, angry divorcees around. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, I, I don't want to be like them. Yes, you made a choice. Yeah, I don't want to be like them. I don't want, I am from a polygamous home and I know what the pain is like. And so when I say I don't want to be like my mom, I understand what I was talking about, mm. you know. And so I said, oh, around divorce, there's this stigma. Even the children are being stigmatized. Mm -hmm. And they say there is this generational cause thing attached to it. Mm. And I told myself, no. So I want to make a change. Mm. I want to change the narrative around divorce. Mm. And that was when I started my journey to um, personal development. Mm. I first of all embraced therapy, counseling and therapy. Mm -hmm. Mind you, when I say counseling, I'm not talking about the religious counseling. Mm -hmm. Proper professional counseling. Yeah, counseling therapy. Yeah, professional counseling because yeah. the truth is our religious organizations are not getting it right. Yeah, they're not equipped. They're not equipped to do that. Yeah. And so they made it worse. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. You know, as always, we've run out of time, but before we go, I would like you to please give us three to five strategies, you know, easy to, to adopt strategies that one can take to have a fulfilling beginning and middle mm -hmm. after ending um, a marriage. Okay, so um, after hell ending a marriage, for you to have a good life, I'm living a good life right now. I'm so aligned with my inner and outward life. People don't even believe that I am divorced, right? So what are the things I did? Like I said, I sought for counseling and therapy. Mm -hmm. Because when you are going through divorce, you are hurting. Mm -hmm. You are... You're grieving you're the grieving. end of something. Mm -hmm. And there's a tendency that you misbehave. Mm. Mm. Hurting so people will definitely hurt people. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so seek counseling for help. And thera yes. yes, counseling, mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. Choose to live a good life. We're talking make the other choice. time. Yeah, make a choice. Choose to live a good life. It doesn't yeah. have to be the popular way. The social media. There are a lot of counselors on social media. They will tell you how to do it. But what do you want for yourself? Mm. What kind of life do you want for yourself? Mm. If the children are involved, you have to be conscious. Mm be sensitive about the children. Mm. Enough of, you know, I told myself, my daughter is going to live a wholesome life. Mm. And I'm glad, thank God she's, she is. You know, you don't want your children to be bitter. Mm. As a result of the choices you made. As a result okay, of the Okay, so choices the second thing is choose to live a good life. Choose to live a good okay. life. Okay. Have positive people around you. Have positive people around Very you. Very important. Okay, okay. You have the tendency to want to just shrink and um, to wallow to come in self pity, out yes. And going to depression. Self pity. Yes. Pity party is boring. You don't want it. Yes. Have positive people around you. And um, so I tell people whatever happens to you is not your fault. Mm. So it's, not your, it's your responsibility not to stay there. Very true positive perspective. We have the tendency to read meaning to the way somebody looked at us. Because I was, I'm divorced, that's why they are treating me that way. Mm. So have a positive perspective. Whatever is happening, there are tools equipping you for your journey ahead. Mm. And so carry yourself well. Mm. 
And you're able to do that if you have the right perspective to it. Mm. Because I told myself, I want to redefine it. So everything happening, every comment, mm. side comment, you and chose all. a positive perspective. I just, I just gave it up. It's not your fault, you know. But I'm working on myself. You're so going one to more see thing. me. So the last thing is have a positive words. Positive words of That's affirmation. affirmation. Affirm yourself. Okay. You're able to live from the inside out. If from you don't, who will do that for you? Hmm. So I have some so affirmations I wrote out that I tell myself every morning. And that's the energy I exude. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This, this, has been, this has been very, very good. Very fulfilling and very enlightening. Um, and I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I did this right. because a lot of a lot more people people need to start talking, you know, the, the stigma just needs to end and people need to understand that you can have a beautiful beginning and a middle, post the end. Can I add this? Yes. So remember that pretty girl that Daddy loves so much. Okay. And everybody adores. Yes. Primary school. Or pretty. Or, or handsome school. guy. Oh, and some guy. Okay, so I don't want to... Let's, let's, let's remember that both sexes <laughs> go right. through the same thing. So, remember that person. And hold on to that person. And hold on to that person. Yeah. Before and that was why I said trauma and drama of life. End of the marriage is not the end of... Your life. Your life. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. This has been really, really impactful. Short but sweet, mm. and I really do hope that we've learned something from this. A lot of the things that Ebon has said resonate so strongly with me, and I'm really, really glad we did Thank this. Thank you very much. For Thank you for coming, Ebon. I can't wait to have you again. Oh, yeah, we should. This topic again. is... Yes, we right. definitely need to talk yeah. some more on this topic. Um, John, Helen, and myself are going to very, very quickly round off the show, so please stay tuned for a few more minutes whilst we do that. Thank you.